we go to the park to get away from the stinking traffic. Polly he keeps whining he's too hot, so I give him a dollar and tell him to fight down an ice cream truck. But that psycho clown driving it never even swipes. Knocks Polly clean out of his new trainers I just bought today. Like, we get a call from this biker from hell who just trashed the area. Me and my partner are in close pursuit, crossing the Brooklyn Bridge and the boardwalk. We're doing over a hundred miles an hour when the fugitive hits a jogger who's too slow to jump. Pink mist paints up my visor. All I see is red. I'm lucky. I flip right over into the East River. But my buddy hits a gas truck. It's horrible, but true. Twisted metal is happening right here in New York City. Many of our most valuable tourist attractions are in flames. The World Trade Center has come under missile attack. Picture that thing. But now, live coverage from the act, I mean tragedy, from Times Square, where it looks as if the campaign for a car-free city has picked the wrong day to try and make its point. John, what can you see? I see carnage, utter carnage, tragic, amazing. The thing they call Twister is dogging heavy fire from Axel. There's Mortimer drumming up Trey in his cool hearse, and I, I thought I saw the death dozer a minute ago. Oh, Jesus! Well, we seem to have lost John there for a second. Meanwhile, CityScan brings you the expert insight into the crazed mind of the evil impresario responsible for staging this, the ultimate in demolition derbies. Dr. Bruno Bravuski, what can you tell us about the psychotic criminal genius they call Elixir? Imagine an unhappy child, an orphan. The only thing that really loves him is his puppy dog. Orphan? Puppy dog? Give me a break. The only puppy I ever had was in my roadkill collection. You remember, don't you, little sis? You used to like it when I'd let you pet those flatties. 1968. I was 12 years old, and I'd scraped up the best collection of any kid around. Mice, frogs, dogs and cats, possums, squirrels, and all kinds of birds. But the thing I really wanted was a snake. When I saw that copperhead sunning himself on the blacktop right outside our house, it seemed like the most natural thing in the world to go out and squish him flat. Especially since Dad left the keys in the wagon while him and Mom were across the street having beers at the Gravitzes. That V8 rumble sent shivers up my spine as I slipped the brake and let her roll on backwards out of the driveway. I hardly even noticed the bump as those big old tires rolled over your little head. Mom cried a lot. Dad said I had to be punished for my carelessness. You stay out here all night if you have to, boy. But I don't want to see that stain there in the morning. Later, I found your doll. All mashed and mangled up. I stared at it for hours in the moonlight. By midnight... I'd convinced myself it was really you. I'll make it okay. I'll make it okay, sis. I promise. I set you up on the hood of that wagon. Like a mascot. A tiny broken dancer. Balanced over the hungry crow mouth of the demon that now owned both our souls. And I saw how it was going to be. Yeah. You understand, don't you? Just you and me, sis. Out traveling that weird highway forever. 
and death whispering from the radio tuned to hell. I was scared, but I was excited too. I would have quit home and started out right then, if I'd had any money for gas. Two years after we buried you, things were still kind of difficult at home. What a junk that evil hunk of steel. Show some respect for our little girl. You're sick to keep polishing it that way. You think we got money to burn? They argued about it every time we went to put flowers on your grave. Made me crazy to sit there, listening. I felt bad. I felt guilty. I wished I could bring you back, but I couldn't. So I wished I was dead, too. What the? In a car wreck. Six people died on that intersection, not counting mom and dad. I wasn't one of them. I guess I messed up pretty good, huh, little sis? But next time, I'm going to do it right for you. Next time, it'll be my blood running down the gutter for that old god of violent metal death to drink. You see, I knew there'd be a next time. But I didn't know how or when. I was 14 years old and alone in the world. I needed some way to make a living until I could kill myself. I let fate deal the cards, closed my eyes, and stuck out my thumb on the interstate, breathing fumes whipped by slipstream, until I heard downshifting bricks. Where are you headed? Uh, straight to hell, I guess, kid. Want a ride? Al gave me a job. I worked two years patching those big motor death traps back together, beating out wild rhythms, straightening bent steel panels before the next night's show. Al gave me my new name, too. One time when he was whiskied up. Hey, kid, quit with that fancy Caribbean steel band stuff. You bash that metal in American. No more damn Calypso, you hear? Next morning, he was sorry, though. Wanted to make it up to me. Mad Mike went blind drinking ethanol. You can take over his car. Soon as your arm heals up, painted up my old helmet for you, too. Maybe some of my luck will wear off, and one day you'll have a setup as big as this. Yeah. Who knows, Al? Maybe I will. But way back then, in those miserable backwoods dirt track demolition derby years, the last thing I wanted was success. I didn't even want a future. You were there, little sister, riding with me three nights a week for 20 years. Around and around and around in purgatory. But never quite reaching hell. Twenty years, a half million miles of sweating cracker car wreck junkies. All hoping this is the race where the crazy Calypso's devil luck finally lets him down and he leaves the track in a meat truck instead of strolling off with the purse. Never happened though. No matter how hard I tried to make the marks happy, it was always some other guy headed for a wheelchair. <laughs> they hated me, like poison. But never as much as I hated myself. And the fools still paid good money to come and see me drive. I got rich, did a lot of crazy stuff, just didn't care, I guess. There were women, too, in Vegas. I got married. <laughs> I do, I guess. We had a kid, Krista. She was pretty cute. Reminded me of you sometimes, little sis. But her mom soon got kind of ugly and weird. 
hate you. You've destroyed my life. Why can't you just die so I can get the insurance at least? I wish, baby. Didn't happen, though. It was Joni who got clipped the next week by that bouncing tire in Kansas. I wasn't much of a dad, I guess. Dragging little Krista all around the circuit, living out of suitcases and motel rooms. But driving was in her blood. Daddy, I'm kinda sleepy. Should I pull over and rest? Just another hour, honey. You can nap when we get to the roadhouse. I was going down, and I wasn't too bothered if she came with me. Krista would be around the same age as you were, sis. The night I hit bottom and killed her, too. Just like with you, I forgot she was there. Left her sleeping in the back seat while I went into a bar for some smokes. I must have gotten pretty tired, I guess, because it didn't surprise me at all that much to find her mom waiting there for me when I came out. Joni got right to the point, said she was in hell, and she reckoned I should be there too. I didn't disagree. All these years, babe, all I ever wanted was to find the end of this damn road. Then she was gone. Just her voice whispering the radio. It ain't hard, though. You just have to stop driving. Close your eyes. Let go of me. I felt guilty for a second when Krista woke up just before we hit. Daddy, look out! Sorry, honey. <laughs> But then, when you find yourself in the Demon Minions Auto Salvage Yard kit, sentimental stuff like that don't seem important for very long. I remembered how I used to collect roadkill all those years ago. Suddenly, it didn't seem as funny as before. What? What happens now? You try to get away, I chase you, I catch you. Then you get your tangle from my rearview mirror for a couple hundred thousand years, till I get bored torturing you. Ironic, huh, sis? All those years, I spent trying to join you there, and now I suddenly realize hell wasn't where I wanted to be at all. It was the race of my life. I drove like an angel, keeping that demon from wrecking me. He couldn't even bend my fender. Couldn't fly, either. <laughs> Which was kind of tough on him, because the pit didn't have a bottom or a floor. When I crossed the finish line, I found out the devil himself dug demolition derbies. Boy, if that ain't the best stunt driving contest we had down here all season, then my name ain't Satan. You're hot. Believe me, I can tell. And now you wiped Minion's clock clean. I got a vacancy on my team. I'm kinda tired of driving. Did I say you wanna drive? I like you, boy. I'm giving you a promotion. Gonna make you one of us. Now drink this up, and listen while I explain the deal. See, the way it is now, all the hottest drivers stay alive up there for years. While us poor sinners have to put up with the second-rate crumb they ace along the way. I got this scheme to change all that and get us more first-class entertainment down here. It was a pretty good deal. I get to stay on Earth as long as the best demolition derby drivers in the world compete to the death in twisted metal. The losers go below to entertain the old man and his demon track buddies. Of course, for those auto-destruction fanatics in hell, the collateral damage is just a windfall bonus of everyday innocent human souls. But I think the destruction is kind of majestic and beautiful in a terrible sort of way. How about you, sis? Do you think it's pretty, too?
I am Calypso, and thank you for reading Twisted Metal. <laughs> <laughs>